G'day, how you going? I'm Ianapolis, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube video. This is a video I'm going to do for beginners. We'll get some sizes up there straight away first, get that out the way. Because you know what? Some people want to know what size the canvas is. And I'll also get some colours going up the screen for you as well. Now also in the background, I've got a roll of canvas here. Some people have been asking, what canvas do you use, Ian? I buy it in a roll like this. There's about, I get about probably 55 cutouts of my canvas sizes out of this one roll, okay? And it's primed on one side and the other side's raw, okay? And I can virtually custom size any canvas I want out of that, but that's how I buy it. I think it's Frederick's, um, but that's how I buy my canvas. It's about that wide and it's quite long, okay? Six yards long to be exact. So we'll put that there and I'll bring you over here and show you what we're going to get up to, okay? Come on. Now, I've got me horizon line taped over because I want to put the retarder and condition the sky area, but I don't want this underneath this land mass here, so that's why I've taped that up. So I'm just going to start with some craft paint. Look at craft paint. It's just like yogurt, the consistency of yogurt. And I've got some retarder there, clear medium retarder for acrylic paints. And I've got my putter on a brush. Okay, a nice big flat, two inch flat. And I just want to mix that up. You've seen me do this in so many videos, but if you're the first time viewing my video, this is how I condition my skies and get them to blend like oils. So we'll get all this mapped into the footprint of the sky. Don't think about this, you just this way pushing it all over the area don't worry about trying to paint straight away you just want to map it in first get it everywhere you feel you need to cover which is this area here on my canvas for this particular painting all right i've got it all mapped in pretty easy now this brush instead of going from this angle it's going to go to the tip okay and i'm going to start stroking this from the left and the right and getting it ironed out like you've got a crinkled up bed sheet and you're just ironing it nice and soft and flat ready to take our sky colors all right now the next colors i've got down on my palette i've got like a cronacridone deep violet i've got my cerulean blue for the blues color and i've got some sun setting colors here hopefully i've got red gold I've got Indian yellow and yellow ochre. Now the red gold, if you don't have red gold, just try and make up a, a bit of a orange, but with a bit of brown to it, I suppose. And I want to start making up the bottom hazy sunset of the sky. So I'm going to go for this violet here and a bit of um, cerulean blue. Now, I've just been over to the sink. I've washed that yellow putter on a brush and I've given it a severe flogging in the beta bucket. And I want to get this. So let's grab some of this for the very bottom half of the sky down there. Uh, how, how's that going to look with some white in it? Is that going to be the colour I want? I think so. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. This is the very bottom of the sky. So that's why I've got the tape there. Now, I'm not going to follow the tape. You don't want to do that. You just want to keep everything pretty much like this. This is just the very bottom bit, very bottom bit down there like so. And I'll just scoop that in. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit more just to get some darker values within that right down on the horizon. There we go. Now I've got the red gold down there. I wanna put this in the middle and start piercing this into that color there. And from about here in the middle, get it from about there and start bringing it out over that sky there. Get a bit more. There we go. We can bring that up there like that. Beautiful. Now we're going to crease that into that violet just like that. Now I'm going to wipe that brush and I want to smoothen this. I've wiped that brush, smoothened it. Now I'm picking up the Indian yellow and I want to try and get some of this into that colour that I've just put on. 
So from about here, the center where the, oh, look at that, beautiful. About there. Crease it into there. Pick up some more. And it's coming up into the sky there like that. Nice colors there. Okay, I, I do have to wipe that again because I need to iron that out. Okay, so I'm just giving it a, a good wipe. And then using the tip of the hairs on that putter on a brush, I'm just wiping it like that. There we go. Now, so we don't get any green in our blue, I'm gonna put a hint of that violet back up here. It's a lot lighter than what was down the bottom because it doesn't have the blue mixed into it. And we'll get that there like that. See how I'm forking it into the center? I'm bringing your eye into there. I'm gonna wipe it again because it's got quite build up on there. Wipe that on there. And this is something a beginner can do. Now we're gonna come from the center and I wanna just Oh yeah, look at that, beautiful. Now we'll quickly put the blue in there. So I'm picking up the cerulean blue. The white on the board, the canvas is gonna dull this down as well so it won't be so cartoony and dark looking like that. I wanna start at the top, pushing it in and then bringing it down into that white. Do the same over here and then bring it into there. I'm crisscrossing it, pulling some of that up, see? Pretty much everywhere I want. Now I'm gonna wipe that again. A lot of wiping going on here, but that's what you need to know how to do, okay? I've just wiped that putter on a brush, see? And now I wanna use the tip again and then pull all this, and I'm pretty much blending all the brush strokes out of that blue. Play with it. You don't have to be in a hurry like me. You always hear me say, well, quickly put some blue on there. But that's just me telling myself I've got to quickly do it before my retarder dries. Now we've got to get some clouds on there before we lose everything. Just before we do, I'm going to get a pouncer, some titanium white out the tube, and a little bit of the craft paint to make it spread better. And we're just going to condense the middle area there with the white onto this color here. So. We're pretty much, where's me, there we go. We're going to dance this around just like that. We're gonna get a glare there, just like that. Look at that. With the pouncer, stop. Pick up a blending brush, and I want to softly dance that and pull it through this other color here. There we go, just getting rid of that edge. One side done, and we'll do the other side. I'm I'm laying on it and pulling it that way gently though. That's the movements I'm doing just to get rid of those harsh edges there. There we go. So I just grabbed some white. I stamped the cloud on. I'll do a bit more. Just up high, nothing heavy. And I've got my blending brush and I've blended it in a horizontal movement, so it's like the wind's pushed it up there. I just want some soft white ones up top in the sky. All right, I'll load this brush up again, and we'll just put a few more little clouds feathering in the sky there. So I'll probably want some just scooting across here off the page, and some in the middle there like that. Stamp them on. Pick up some more if you need to. There we go. Just something subtle like that. And then we'll lightly blend these into that blue as well. Very lightly. Now where that color is meeting the blue, I've got to join that up with some clouds. So I've loaded my brush up again and I want to, I'll start in the blue. I'll get some of this white on there. And I'm still going to come in that long fashion like this. And then I'll get some of this just gently coming into the painting like so. I'll do one side first because the brush is getting contaminated. Same blending brush, I've given it a wipe and we'll start from the big end here and kind of wisp that, look at that, just so easy, boom. 
wipe it. Find out how your brush is moving in the paint. There we go, same over here. Boom, we'll do the same to the other side. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get a bigger body here and I wanna come across here and I want some in all of this as well. So I'll come out from there and I'll get some stuff venturing up here like that. Okay, maybe a little bit there. Wipe the blending brush. I love these tails on there. It adds depth and distance in your horizon there. Pull that out here and then we'll start blending that appropriately. Beautiful. Get some of it pulling into the painting. There we go. These are just subtle. I've got to wipe that brush. It's building up a bit of paint. Take your time. There's no rush. Whatever you do, don't rush like I do. Do as I say. Not as I do. No, yeah, do as I say as well. <laughs> I've got to practice what I preach, don't I? I'm pull them, sit them down a little bit. A little bit, there we go. Sit this one down as well. There we go. Mm. All right, that sky's done. You can muck with that till the cows come home, but that'll do for the sky. I've just got that violet and the blue here. I've mixed up a bit of a shadowy colour. Now you don't have to do this if you want. I want to put some kind of big shadow cloud just sitting here. So I'll keep a bum on it and try and just put something there. And maybe something up here just in shadow. Okay. Bring that around. I'm picking up titanium white just on the corner there because I'm just going to use this brush to put the most daintiest halo around those clouds. So where's the paint on this corner? So see this brush here? I wanna, I'm in this cloud. I'll kind of just get something on there and I'll use the other end if I can to blend that into that cloud body just so we've got some kind of a halo on it. And we'll do the same to this one, not, not too much. something there and the other un the cleaner side of that brush I'll just do something like this stabbing it into that cloud there boom boom I have got some of that Indian yellow now mixed with the white and I'm just painting that highlight now with some like Indian yellowy white colour here just to give that shine of the sun hitting that cloud as it's setting. And that's it. Now you don't have to add these if you don't want to, I just did for the sake of the video tutorial. Now the sky is finished, I want to pull this tape off. And then I'll just squash any ridge of paint down on there with my finger. And then I can give that a bit of a dry later. But we're going to do the water now. So I'll just you can see all that thick retarded paint there. And when that gets, that's why I taped it up. Because if you try and paint over that, you can. But if you're not careful, it can mud it up and you'll be like so frustrated. Carefully do this. Just getting any ridge of paint away if it might be there. Now I've got some more craft paint ready to prime up the bottom area there. So I'll get all this water, same as I did at the top. Get it all going to where you want it, which is about there, somewhere about there. it I squash that with my finger I'll brush it left and right now I've just wiped that brush because I want to mix 
up the watercolour, which is just the grey and the cerulean blue. You've seen me do this in other videos before, some, to some of you. We're going to get the watercolour. So I'm going to start from the bottom, push it on, and then bring it to the horizon line, which is about there. Get it all on there. Try not to have your bottom horizon area so high. The lower you get this, the more flat, and it's going to look like you're looking across this flat water surface. If you have it too high, it's like you're looking at the painting from a helicopter. And how often are we in a helicopter looking at the sunset? Okay, now I'm just grabbing some of the cerulean blue on its own. I'm going to just add the little bit of that violet into there just to get it a bit dark. Not too much, see? Because I do want some darker facets out here. Look at that, beautiful. Yes, and I want to iron that down and waterfy that. Now I'll turn the brush on its edge. There we go. Simple. And I'll pick up some more of that and probably put a facet there and a facet there. Get the brush on its edge now and waterfy that. And then we're making it look quite lovingly lovely. All right, now we need the sun in there. Sorry, the camera wasn't on. I'm just waterfying that with the put it on a brush. So I've got the yellow, the sunny colours there with some white in it. The camera wasn't on. I'm using a pouncer and I've pretty much got that on the water in a straight line. Okay, and I got my put it on a brush and I waterfied that just by pulling it across. And I'm just distorting that very gingerly. There we go, but it's in a straight line because I don't want that harsh line underneath it. Okay, I've got my flat head, my flat faced toothbrush. I'm starting in the water and I want to pull this white with some of that color there within it, okay? I did put a bit of mask and tape there so none of this will go in the sky. And this is mainly at the foreground here. We want to go over the what do you call it that reflection of the sun in the water with this and this has got pretty much the orangey flavor to it we can come out a bit more as it comes to the front now i'm going to wipe that and pick up a lot more of a white flavor of that with the craft white and get some light, there we go. And this is just going to be that shimmer that I put on the water or that you see me do quite a lot. We could probably get some of it banding over there if we want, but there we go. Beautiful. I'll just pull this tape off there. And now I'm going to put these trees in. I've got a little flat brush and before I um, get too far, I just want to finish that water because I don't want to have to go back to it. So I'm grabbing some of the um, cerulean blue just with a flat brush, okay? Because in the foreground, I want some scalloping stuff like that, but you want your, your paint quite wet just so it comes a little bit transparent-y, but it's easy to get onto the canvas because I want some where, where's my tape there it is I want some just scallopy bits of this tracing up into the water making it look like there's darker values getting hit by the light keep them lineal could be a band of darkness over there even just something like that in front of the water and maybe a bit over here Get out there. now that same brush I've just cleaned it and I'm just getting some I don't know ripply highlights within this I'm just seeing if it's wet enough just to get some kind of highlights 
in here scattered this is just bullshit detailing making it look more wow so when that man's looking at your painting he's just stepping back and going look at the reflection of the sun in the water there i like that it looks good because you've taken that extra time just to put these little scallopy reflections of the actual white in there is that doing it i hope so it's just different than big white knife marks across your water. Okay, just to finish it off, we're gonna put that grow, uh, row of trees out there. So quite simple. I've got some black, probably put a little bit of forest green in it just so it's not so roary black. Now I've got a bit of water there. You don't want it too watery though. Let's hope I don't go too watery. And we want to, well, first we'll put my bullshit stick there because we want a nice straight horizon line, okay? So let's just see how watery that is. And we'll get that nice and straight all the way across there, just like that. That's why I got the paint a bit watery, not too watery though, so it's gonna give a reasonably sharp edge there. Now we can pull that away. And now I'm gonna go to my flat filbert brush to get the tops of these in, because I want to silhouette all that and then just put some subtle, deep highlights there. So we're going to go above there and get some air in between there. Well, well, what we'll have to do, we'll have to go like this. So that's a very blacky green color, which is what I want. It's just not raw black. It's got color and value in there. So we got that there. Mix up some more in that flat brush because what I want to do is I'm going to have to use my smaller one later. I'm going to use this to map it all in. So let me get all this danced across to the other side of the painting, okay? I'm right, just finishing this off and then I'll detail the top edge of that the way I want it with a smaller one. So I've got a smaller cat tongue now just so I can detail the top of that and then we'll subtly highlight it because what I want to do is bring see you know how I do this all the time put some air in the top of these trees as you detail it down to that solid in mass it doesn't take two seconds to do this and my goodness the value it adds to your painting is unbelievably unbelievable it's great just little simple facets like this turn a mungy painting into a million dollars. So I'll get that all the way across there now. All right, we're just finishing off here. Now I'm gonna dry this and then we'll add the subtlest but highlightingly detail within this mass of trees. Now I've got some cad yellow medium there, so I'm just gonna mix up out of that green probably just enough just to subtly highlight that. I don't want too much. I don't even know why I put such a big blob there. That's plenty, plenty. Now I'm gonna wet me brush so we get a, a reasonably good transfer rate from the brush to the canvas. Because when paint's really thick, it's hard to come off your brush and stick to your canvas. Then we're going to put this color on and all that black was just the depth for this color here and we're going to come along and add our trees now this will fade down to the bottom probably just like that I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up I'll have a look later but in real life this has got you can see these colors here and it's just more better than a, a black silhouette so I'm going to do this all the way across here as well and then we'll put a bit more of a brighter highlight where the sun is sort of shining over it, okay? So I've pretty much done all that. Now I just want to put some subtle highlights. So grabbing probably some more of the yellow and let's just see how this is going to... Not too heavy, you want to press very light and I want everything to bow into the middle. 
So this is just, there's the sun bit there. It's all coming from the right and bowing into the left. The sun's the center here. So this is all just bowing into the center there. If you can see what I mean. And we'll put a bit on the other side. Now it's going the opposite way. It's going to come from this side and bow into the middle from the left hover it down and bow it into the middle instead of bowing it this way and that way it just more looks more pleasant for the art's sake okay okay now you can see that now there's not enough i just want to do the just probably a glare around here so grabbing a bit more yellow let's grab a bit more yellow How light I'm touching that very lightly, eh? Hey? See? Bow into the middle. Just from about here. Leaving darks there still, you're just highlighting the little bits that the sun's able to hit there. Nice soft little sharp fine dainty little foliage brush strokes and I'll have a look at that don't overdo it please I've just gone that little bit more yellow because I'm just really trying to get nastingly detail around here of the light hitting it. There we go, just about here. That'll do it. Now just to finish it, I've got this paint here that we, we had with the black and the green. I've got that flat brush that I use for the horizon line. And I'm just going to put something simple coming off the foreground here. So I'll get a bit of a branch there like that nice and sharp on the edges if you can this is in silhouette now because the, the lights behind it so this isn't going to be too detailed but it'll be enough to give the painting its facets that it needs okay skinniest one along here just something like that Okay, and maybe something, where's the bottom of my tape? Something poking up there. There we go. I've got quite a big filbert here because I need some just foreground leaves in front of that. So we'll probably put something like this. Come off your painting just like that. And then we're going to get all this. That's why I wanted a big brush. I want some big, close leaves here. Big brush, lots of color. I mean, lots of darkness, but we've got water. These are coming from the top down. We've got water showing through. There we go. Bits of water showing through there, okay. Same on the other side. Bits of stuff is just coming right over the painting right over the painting boom joined to this foreground tree that's just out of focus but it's just in there and we can maybe put something there that's it just simply grab a liner and you can join anything up that you feel needs joining up with a limb or a bit of a branch just like that see we've got something maybe we'll, just for the sake put something there like that and I'll bring my oh it's not going to get wet you and we'll put one there but see how that's broken up I want that quite solid so I'll go from the bottom up twisting the brush as I go and we just got little lines here 
making it look like these leaves are not floating. Okay. Now I've given that a dry, I've got the same brush. I'm just gonna pick up some of this forest green with it, maybe for, so I get the forest green and then a bit of yellow, just mumbled into the brush there. And I'll see if some of this can be like this. How's that looking in there? I want it to stay dark, but not too bright. I'm just gonna do some of this detail over this silhouette of these leaves here. All right, I'll put my autograph on here and we'll whack a frame on this. I wanna try and get my autograph a lot smaller. Sometimes I go a bit too big. Now check out the links in my description below the video. A lot of people don't realise just how much content I have in my YouTube channel here. So you need to go down there and have a look at the videos I've got in my channel here. There's so many there. There's over 350. And all my tutorials and prints of my tutorials are available to buy. Message me on Facebook. Links for the dis in the description below for my Facebook and my art group page. Okay, now I'll whack the frame on there like that. Where are we? There we go, that's not too shabby. I don't know what sort of scene it is, but we've got something in the foreground making you look way back in the middle there. We've got a beautiful sun setting sky and some water and land mass elements, okay? And just remember, that's a beautiful painting in a frame and it's something you can do. All right, I'm quite happy with that and I'm pretty sure you are if you're following me here. Make sure you tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, okay? All the best, goodbye, good luck and good on you.